Okay, Andre, here's your data. Um, I think this is what you want to do, what you're saying to me. Well, actually, let me just look at it and uh, see what's going on. So you have four days that you separated out, and you want to have it to where they display, you said, um, the same timestamps at the bottom. So this is what, uh, let's just go through it. Um, first, uh, I would probably, well, I'm just going to mess around with it because I want to see what's going on here. So I'm going to, I'm right clicking, I'm changing the, the chart type. I don't think we really need the, um, let me just, let's talk about this for a second. So you've got temperature and humidity and, you know, this is great that you did this. You, you, you figured this out and you're displaying them uh, in, uh, with two different ranges which is a good idea in some ways because it's, you know, it, it puts them together. But I would argue that this, I mean, it, you know, puts them in, in uh, to where they're overlapping one another. But since these are actual values that have meaning, um, I think it's better if we use the same range so that we can um, sort of, I don't know, it separates them out sort of more clearly. Uh, so so we, we're always looking at the same number. We're like, okay, this is you know, 38, or this is 46, this dot right here, not at this point, not which one is it. Somewhat subjective, but I'm going to go ahead and do that to show you what I mean. Um, so I'm coming here, I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm also going to, at this point, we probably should just be able to you know, just do a regular scatter plot. I'm going to do it with, I'm, I'm just going to see the points for the, for the time being, so we know how many data points per hour there are. I think that's useful. Um, then... Um, what you're asking, I think, is just how do I change this this axis here? So if I click on it, I double click on it, I get all these options. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is change the number. I think you might have been playing around with this and uh, doing a custom code, which is cool. Um, and you definitely can do that, and you can look up how to how to uh, customize things further here. But um, if we're doing, let's start with a with a time. And then we can switch, we can say whatever we want. So I want to have the date and the time, let's say. Um, and I come back out, and it's basically the same thing you had before. By the way, I would probably um, rotate this. So let's see if I come back to here. We go to access options. Um, I'm going, sorry, I'm thinking about two different things here. I'm in this uh, size and properties. And I'm going to make it, I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it this way so I have the, the time at the top. Um, okay, so that's good. I'm going to come back here and rearrange things. I'm going to pull, resize this. You know, you don't have any, um, it's time and this is going to, you need to put a, well, maybe you don't. I would say in hours or whatever it is as a unit. Um, I probably would come over here and give a little space to this. So I can pull this out. Um, okay, so still, I don't think what you want um, because we're, you know, we're just doing 12 a.m., 12 p.m. That's not uh, enough gradation. So if I click on the axis again, um, and I change the units between the major and minor. Um, Grid lines, basically, is what it is. So this is just how how we're dividing up, um, or we're basically deciding how um, how often do you have a measurement on the x and y axis. So let's say if I just change this to point one. Now it's kind of weird with dates, you know, if these were actual numbers, just to be clearer. But you can see then by doing that, I get um, what am I getting here? Looks every looks like every two hours and twenty four minutes. Um, so I could go 0.05 if I wanted. Sorry. And get more. Um, then I could even I can come in here and I can um, insert tick marks. So I'm just gonna throw in whatever here just so you see what I'm talking about. Um, that's too many. <laughs> uh, you know, I can do it on whichever axis I want. I can also I could um, create a grid here if I wanted to. Um, so that I'm in, that's another setting if you want to play around with it. I'm just saying there's a lot of ways to, um, adjust the layout of this. But anyway, so what are we talking about here? Now we have a, I think it's clearer because we're saying, 
all right, we're between 50, uh, we're, this is really cold in this room for some reason, we're between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're um, hovering around 40% relative humidity, and we can see then the relationship, so that, you know, like I said before, it should be, if all things are equal, I mean, in other words, if we're not changing the, the air mass, that when this temperature goes up, this relative humidity should go down, kind of did that, so, but then it continues to go down, so I'm thinking a window's open. I don't know. You have to think about why this would be happening. Um, because, again, if you just have a closed air mass and nothing else is changing and you increase the temperature, your relative humidity will go down. That's a, a deterministic relationship. Um, okay, but now we could come here and change this if we wanted to, the, the range. So I could say I want to go between um, 30 and, you know, whatever. 55 is just with the automatic. So, you know, I, I can now adjust this to where I have more um, clarity on uh, or, or I'm zooming in on the data. Now, maybe you don't want to do that because over here um, we're going to have, what is it? Um, you're going, um, looks like we're going up to 65. So maybe we would keep this one uh, where we were uh, going, let's say we'll go to 70. I'm sure we're not going to go below 30 degrees, so that's not a bad idea. And then we, then we would be com comparing apples to apples as we go through these different charts. I would perhaps argue that you would put these all in the same chart maybe you could even do it where you had the same okay because here's the other thing you do not have any uh you don't actually have days right so if i come over here i, I always like inserting space so that i can see what's going on um you're you're you know that this is your day one your day two day, day two, three day four but there's not actual dates so this was false down here so if i come back and i change i go back to numbers and um, I make it time, but I just display the hours. This is this is honest, right? Um, I'm not sure how you got this data and why it's just um, one per hour, one data point per hour. But I mean, maybe that's how you said it. I'm not really worried about that. I think it's um, it's good. You're just working with data. Um, but you could then come back here and you could say, okay, I'm gonna now actually um this is my day one i could come over here and bring these uh two columns or i could even i don't need to bring them over i could actually just i could i could say okay now i'm gonna um select data i'm gonna add in my day two so i'm gonna call this um day one temp And uh, this day one relative humidity. Now I can add more data. So I'm going to call this day two temp. I'm going to put in my, it should be the same time values, like you said, right? So I'm going to assume that that's the same. So I'm just going to call it that. I'm going to say that's my x-axis and then I can come over here to this other day too and do temp for that day and so if I come back to my chart now I've got you know day one and day two temp and that's getting to be interesting because now I can really compare them right now, it could be, and if you go back and you do this for relative humidity and temperature for all the days, um, it could get kind of confusing, so maybe you don't want to do that. It's up to you, but um, it's a possibility, and I think I, I might do both. I, I, I'll, I just think that this is, well, actually, it, you could do it either way. Um, oh, and you have all data over here, so you could maybe do it here. I'm not sure. I, I didn't even look at this page. Um, Let me see a couple other things. You know, you can also spiff up these. I can select here, put a border around this. You know, decide the color of the border. Um, you know, I, I can make these more like something that I would want to display. Um, I can actually, even in Excel, I can get rid of my 
grid lines, so it's it looks more like a you know if I was doing a screenshot, I can take it directly from here. Um, like I said, you know we can um, we can add. Let me see. Yeah, so let's let's um, do vertical axis major grid lines. Uh, we did that already. So let's we could add. Uh, I'm saying horizontal axis. Um, let's see where it is. I don't see it right here. I don't want to waste any more of your time. I'm just, I don't know, I'm not wasting your time, but what I'm saying is you can play around and you could, um, I don't think we should do it, that's why I'm not going to do it, but you could actually make it to where there's grid lines both vertically and horizontally. So it's, it's basically a, um, you're making uh, a squared grid across the entire uh, graph. That, that can be helpful for some things. So the point is play around with this with all these different, now that you sort of see the, the workflow, you click on what you want to edit. There's a thousand things to edit, play around with them. Um, anything that, that you click on, it's the same thing. Like I can uh, decide I want this uh, legend maybe to have um, a border. I want it to have fill, solid fill. Sometimes I do this so that uh, the, the lines behind it don't don't show up. Right? Um, I can stretch it out if I want it to have. If I want it to be in single file, I can move this to the bottom. I actually can. Um, if I click on it here, the legend, I can say where, where it's going to go, or I can just put it there automatically. Um, that obscured my axis title. All right, so there's lots and lots of things you could do to um, make this, this clear in Excel before you take it out to, let's say, Google Slides and put circles on it to say, you know, like, I, I think it'd be interesting to, to mark this up and say, you know, this is you know, door was, you know, window was open on this day or whatever it was that caused these differences. All right. Anyway, I want, this is why I wanted to do a video because I wanted to just kind of go into detail and just kind of ramble around, find things to show you. If we were doing this in person, we, we'd have gotten lost because I would, I'd have kept asking, do you get it? And, and I would, you know, this way you can pause the video, go back. So I'm both kind of giving you examples and, or sort of an overall, like, Hey, play around with this data. And then I'm also giving you specific specific things you can do that you can go back and, and look at the video and figure out how exactly to do. So why don't you look at this, see if it's what you wanted. If not, we can meet. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you later.